Good morning. Welcome to St. Mother Garen Parish. Today is the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we come together at the Lord's table, let us turn to our neighbor and say hello. Hello. Oh, good morning and welcome everybody. Good morning. So let's put our our morning. gathering song will be Oh Bless That's the Lord, the found in your journey book, so number 576. Please stand. Okay. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. With your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You have come to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have come to save sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the 
Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory, glory to, to God, God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Today we celebrate the Liturgy of the Word for children, and so we would like to invite children from kindergarten through fourth grade to come forward to receive their blessings so that they may be sent with Dodi to be able to uh, engage and listen to today's Word, and that they may receive instruction on what the Lord has prepared for them today. So at this time we would like to invite Dodi to come forward. Though you receive this book of reading and proclaim God's work, word faithfully to the children entrusted to your care. So we invite the children to come forward so that they may receive their blessing. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We ask you, Lord, to bless these children that they may encounter your love, they may encounter your wisdom. My dear children, you will now go to hear God's word, to praise God in song and reflect in the wonderful things God has done for us. We will await your return so that together we may celebrate the Holy Eucharist. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may now go forward to receive your class. Thank you. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the sun of justice with its healing rays. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm response is the Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The 
Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Raise a shout before the King, the Lord. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Let the sea and all within it thunder, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands and the rising rock the joy at the presence of the comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day, we worked so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way, by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the name of Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke according to you, o lord. while some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings jesus said all that you see here the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down then they asked him Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you, see that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. 
There will be powerful earthquakes, famines and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty sound signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense for beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all of your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, during the time of Jesus, the temple area where the Temple of Jerusalem was, was a beautiful marvel. It was a temple adorned with beautiful stones, gold-covered areas, and precious metals and stones that filled and made this temple worthy of the dwelling place of the Lord. And so when these people that are with Jesus are talking about how splendid the temple is, Jesus gives them this prediction that there will become, there will come a time in which no stone will be left uh, unturned, that everything will be taken down. And indeed, 40 years from the time of Jesus' death in 70 AD, the temple is destroyed by the Romans. And the Romans do take apart, stone by stone, the entire temple, such that all that was so wonderful during the time of Jesus is now gone. This temple area, this space, is where many Jewish people, the Israelites, came to worship and to be connected to God. But Jesus, who is the living God, the one who came, sent by the Father, so that we may worship not just in that temple, but in Jesus Christ, in his name, that we would have a connection that would bring us closer in relationship with our Heavenly Father. We now have in Christ Jesus the Eucharist, we have the sacraments, we have such a beautiful difference of of worship that it is not just uh, this holy temple in Jerusalem but we are worshiping in spirit but to <coughs> but to be able to do that requires us to have this special relationship with the Lord today we hear about how the Lord is saying to us that those who are coming in his name those who are called Christians those who live out their authentic identity will be persecuted, they will be rejected. And to remember that when we are coming into this persecution, to have courage, to have faith, to not uh, let the things of the world pressure us from being uh, outspoken. Oftentimes now in today's society, we have encountered within the past five years, perhaps, this thing that we call the cancel culture. It is a sense that if you do anything publicly that goes against the trends of current society's thinking, that you run the risk of having your image, your reputation, your very personhood tarnished and removed and blackmailed, and then not content with that being enough, you are then perhaps persecuted or ostracized by the media, by friends, by people who do not even know you, complete strangers on the internet, in your social profiles, 
all because of things that you may say, things that you may publish, photos that you may put online, or simply what you believe in. We are not in a society that is tolerant. We like to claim that we are, that we are a society that welcomes everyone, and yet if there is someone who does not go along with the current trends of the world, society, we are then immediately rejected and labeled as intolerant people. And so we have to recognize that in this life, in this world, the world has and will always reject God, Jesus and his teaching. It is not the world that has accepted the love of the Creator, the love of the Son who gave his life for us, because this is not heaven, this is not the Garden of Eden. It is a place that is imperfect, filled with suffering, filled with selfishness, with hatred, with evil. And that evil seeks to destroy those that have turned its back to the world and are walking with God. And so for those who choose to be true disciples, an authentic self, they will be the ones that are persecuted. And so we have to pray and ask the Lord for courage. Courage because when we go into the world, our classrooms, our workplaces, even family reunions and events as we get closer and closer to Thanksgiving and Christmas, the things that we shy from talking about with those who are with us are usually the same topics. Top, the topics of politics, topics of religion, and whether or not the Green Bay Packers are greater or worse than the Bears, right? So we like to avoid things that bring us into conflict with people. And at some point we have to ask our question, or the question of why. Why do we shy away from things that may create conflicts when we in ourselves feel this truth that is eternal? For you see, brothers and sisters, morality and ethics is not something that is subjective to just a certain group of people. Morality and truth is objective for everyone. There is a, a compass that guides our decision making. And this idea that what is good for some is not good for others, and as long as I don't hurt someone else with my words, I can do what I want, is not something that will help us as a people or as an individual. Because when we fall into the idea that as long as I'm not harming someone else, I can do as I please, this sense of relativism is going to lead us into a dark rabbit hole that will spiral out of control. Because we have no clear indication of right and wrong, of good and evil. And no matter how nice you try to paint evil with nice words, certain things will always be evil. And so in today's uh, current society, and in, in this past week that we had our elections, certainly the country was divided among many topics, many things, many different parties, even among Christians and Catholics, topics of abortion, talk, topics that perhaps are difficult to publicly speak about. Because of why? The cancel culture. Because if you say something that might offend someone, you are immediately blacklisted, kicked out. You're put in a corner because you didn't play nice with others. Well, Jesus didn't come to play nice with evil. He came to call out the things that were offensive to the Lord, the things that were leading us into a struggle for the salvation of our souls. He came to cut ties with the things that were shackling us to darkness, to selfishness, to greed, to evil. He came to set us free. And yet, there are times when we choose to shackle ourselves back, to go back into the darkness, because we are afraid to speak. We are afraid of being silenced by the world, by cruelty, 
by people that ultimately have no say when we are before the Lord in judgment. So let us ask and pray for courage, brothers and sisters, that we may face whatever may come in complete trust that the Lord is with us. Even if mom and dad disagree, even if my brother and sister do not like what I have to say, even if my friends turn their back against me, it may be inconvenient and it might hurt to lose some friendships or relationships. But I tell you that those people will not be there to help you and justify your actions before God. We are the ones who can say enough. And so when we unite in our faith, brothers and sisters, when we ask for the courage to live our authentic discipleship, our faith that unites us, the reason that we are here today, then we can go forward into the world that we live in, but do not belong. And be courageous in moments that we see evil at work. Because it is out there. And so you can choose to be silent and let the world pass over you as a bully. To tell you what is popular, what is good, what is what the world wants. Or you can choose to not be silent. To turn off the TV when it is offensive. To correct the behavior of those entrusted to your care. To say that we must pray as a family before our meals because we are giving thanks to the Lord that we have this McDonald's Happy Meal today. The good chicken nuggets that we enjoy. We have to be a culture of courage, of faith, of perseverance. And it begins with you. Not me, not the deacon, not Father Paul begins with each one of us. So let us ask the Father today for courage, for strength, that we may be that light of Christ. As we come now to the end of our liturgical year, we will be, be beginning a new cycle the first week of Advent. We have ended the Gospel of Luke, and we will begin the Gospel of Matthew. A new year, a new self is upon us. Let us ask the Lord as we enter this new time to help us grow as disciples and most importantly, as children of God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We ask our Heavenly Father to receive our prayers this morning as we gather together as a community of faith for our families, for our loved ones, for our children. We pray that together we may ask for sincerity of heart, for courage, and for a discipleship that grows each and every day. For greater integrity in the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For retreats, small groups, and other congregational activities, <clears throat> that create space for faith testimonies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the space and focus to renew our spiritual lives this coming Advent season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For organizations that provide essential services to people who are without food, water, or shelter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being baptized into our faith community, Asher, Jackson, Quavo, Urban, Samson, Arthur, Quavo, Urban, Emmas, Astrid, Bayar, Yalagan, Valentina, Gloria, Galliano. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For the sick, especially those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace for our beloved dead, Joseph Nasty, Terry Slazik, Larry London, <clears throat> Sister Joyce Schreiner, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions for which this Mass is offered, Frank Pudlow, Roman and Anna Romaniak, Esperanzo, Viviencio, Tikal, Stanley and Helen Kubaki, Chuck Mascari, John S. Cusera, Dorothy Gatto on anniversary, Paula and Michael Griengo, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we continue to desire your presence in our lives, we ask you always to remain with us. May we grow in our fidelity and discipleship as we follow the footsteps of your most beloved Son, in whom we place our hopes. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good all His holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to, aid, to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And so you love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the fit, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, when we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, a sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise Supich, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the presence of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us share some sign of peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot now receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion song can be found in Journey, number 798, Spirit and Grace. Spirit and Grace, here in this through the field, gather the wheat and form us in Christ. Come be our source and breath of life. In the bread blessed, broken and shared, Christ is our life who 
Let us pray. We have partaking of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for today's announcements. Thank you. Our parish fall craft fair is Sunday today from 8.30 to 3 p.m. in the St. Celestine Gym. Stop by and shop. The Good Grief Bereavement Ministry meets this Wednesday at 6.30 in the Fireside Room. The Women's Club has a meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the Annex. Janine Schneider will demonstrate how to make a Thanksgiving centerpiece. Once again, the Women's Club is collecting wrapping paper, tape, and bows for Sarah's Inn. Containers will be in the back of both churches beginning next weekend. See page six of the bulletin. Our annual Christmas concert is back. 
please mark, mark your calendars for December 4th at 2 p.m. in St. Celestine Church. Come and bring a friend as our choirs get you into the Christmas spirit. So uh, once again, we are encouraging everyone to please um, make your way through the gym towards our craft fair as you make your way towards your car. Maybe if you're getting hungry, there's hot dog sales, there's food, there's uh, many different crafts that vendors have brought. This is one of our uh, fundraising events that we have for our community. So we would uh, you know, just appreciate the support and I'm sure all of our volunteers who, have, who are there today would also like to see your bright and shining faces. So thank you so much for your support this day as we go forth to kind of ask the Lord to help us live our life more authentically, to not be ashamed of being sons and daughters of the Lord, but to be proud, to be uh, eager to be that light unto others as we know that perhaps someone has been that light for us. So uh, one other announcement is that um, next weekend there will be an article in the bulletin uh, that Father Paul wrote regarding the Cardinal Supich's decision to lift the, um, <clears throat> uh, the, the ban, you could say, it, it, the dispensation from attending Sunday Mass uh, during pandemic. So when pandemic hit, we know that immediately the churches were closed. Um, in the coming weeks, we had to register to come to Mass. There were many more restrictions in terms of uh, hand, sanitiz hand sanitizing, masks, distancing, and everything that we remember to be the beginning months of the COVID-19 pandemic. And part of that, uh, what came out of that was that because we know that there were many families who uh, would feel perhaps not ready to come to church, the bishops in the country, along with the Pope, gave a dispensation to nullify what we understand is our Catholic moral responsibility to attend church on Sundays unless we would fall into then uh, sin. And so that is one of the Ten Commandments to come to church on days that are festive like Sundays or holy days of obligation. Like the next one coming up is December 8th, the Immaculate Conception. And so um, during these past two years, people have been able to view the Mass either online, through television, and it will count as being here present in body, you could say, at church. But now that we have gone two years into COVID and we see that a lot of these restrictions throughout the entire state and country have more or less either relaxed or disappeared, we are calling back Catholics home. We're calling you home because primarily this is a place that is special for the worship of the Lord. And as comfortable as perhaps we have gotten as being able to view the Mass as we sip our morning coffee, as we sit on our couch or over our dining room table, we have to acknowledge that it's not the same. And so while we do see that there are select individuals because of health reasons or morbidity, they cannot uh, leave their homes to come to church, the live streaming will continue to support our community members who are in that situation. But if you are at home, if you have been going out shopping, if you've been going out to concerts this summer, if you've been going to the beach to enjoy the beautiful sun, if you've been going on walks, all of these things that you have been able to do without complaint, without perhaps a fear of what is out there, and we encourage you to come home to church to the temple of worship. And so following the first week of Advent, the Cardinal has lifted the dispensation so that if you are not at church physically, if you are able-bodied and able to do so, then you will need to go to confession before receiving Holy Communion again because you would have fallen into the sin of breaking one of the Ten Commandments. There's a whole article explaining everything I'm only trying to summarize and prepare our community for the first week of Advent. So Father Paul is doing a wonderful job of writing all the details out in next week's bulletin that we celebrate Christ the King. And so please uh, look towards that bulletin for more information. But for those who this does not directly impact, primarily most of us here, uh, it would be a great help to us if you could inform those 
that are in your household, friends and family, that coming the first week of Advent, if you know people that have been staying at home, to encourage them to come with us, come join us in worship. We want to see all of our friends and, and family members in Christ who have we not, we, whom we have not seen these past couple of months. So um, more information to come, but um, we encourage you to keep everyone in prayer as this is something that is still very delicate for some. But we are encouraging everyone to come back to receive the Eucharist whole, right? To receive Jesus into their body, their spirit. And this is the place where the Lord is calling us to do so. So we're going to keep everyone in prayer these next couple of weeks so that we can hopefully see an increase in families, in children, in, in loved ones. And so please help spread the word that as we enter Advent, the church will once again in the Archdiocese of Chicago require you to be here on Sundays as part of our Catholic tradition. Okay? So thank you for this opportunity to share this with you. As I said, more information will be available next week in the article that Father Paul is published in our bulletin. So I thank you for your patience. So now let us now stand for our final blessing as we ask the Lord to send us forth so that we may be able to be that light unto others. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Now let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is We Are Called to Serve, found in your Mother Garen Songbook, number 19. We Are Called to Serve, found in your Mother Garen Songbook, number 19. called by name and all we are